we're realizing we have something wrong going on here. You know, it's going to blow our dikes apart. You always have that wonder. Well, it's scary. Yeah, I mean, you don't, uh, you don't sleep a couple nights. It just hurts all the way around. We need to do something. So in just over a year, we've had three major floods. Uh, that's a problem. One of the big things that we can do is lower the levels and the heights of the floods, minimize the damage of these floods, and try and cut down on the frequency of the floods that are coming. For 52 years, I've dealt with a lot of floods. It's just been constant. And there hasn't been one when the water is coming that uh, you're not under stress. How big is it gonna be? What are the effects gonna be? Am I ready? Do I have my protections in place to uh, protect my home? We've had just a lot of frustration. We don't know for sure if the roads are going to go over, if the railroad's going to be running. The complaints from the customers that we have to deal with and trying to make everybody happy and trying to give them answers and they're panicking because when the customer needs product, they will go elsewhere and they have gone elsewhere. Since I was employed by the Walsh County Highway Department back in 1998, I've been through 16 flood events. It's a lot of money locally that is being spent and that all equates to property tax dollars because there's just no way that you can continue to come up with this amount of money every single year or three times in a year. After going through several floods here through the 70s and 80s, 97 and the big flood, when uh, Ram Forks got flooded and they had a huge rebuild. One of the things they did was they opened up the Kennedy Bridge Complex wider uh, so that more water could flow through there. North of us up at Drayton, a brand new bridge went in up there, way longer than the old bridge. Both those locations, the entire Red River goes through those bridges without flooding the highways around them, allowing traffic to go through without any interruption. Large in Grand Forks, small in Oslo, small 317 back at large in Drayton. The bridge in Oslo can handle about 45,000 cubic feet per second. Like a flood in 2020, just last year, the Red River was conveying about 70 to 80,000 cubic feet per second. That differential, that can fill up a section of land one mile square, one foot deep, in 13.3 minutes. We have had several people in the past we've had to go out and rescue. One that sticks out in my mind was a vehicle that was uh, in the water that we could not get to. That guy sat out on top of his car for 12 hours by the time we were able to get out there. It was under 30 degrees, but that was the guy had on was a t-shirt. Um, National Guard has been great for us. They've helped us out, but it'd be sure nice not to have the National Guard come in every single year. It is a small town, but it's a very important town. It's a it's a very important highway to come through. It's, uh, you know, North Dakota's right on the other side of us. There's a lot of traffic that comes through here. The airboat will go on the ice and it'll go in the water. It goes on anything. So we're the only thing in the area that can go around. Luckily, we're putting our, our lives at risk every single year during the flood. The railroad bridge was built in 1905. I mean, man, that's, that's over 100 years old. The numbers I see, 17% of the North Dakota's wheat moves through that rail line, which is actually 3% of all the wheat grown in the United States. And that has to shut down. That affects uh, the prices for everyone. The railroad bridge, built to 1905 constraints of steam traffic, has a huge pier right in the center to, so that that bridge can turn. And never happened in practice. Our solution comes in three phases. And so phase number one is to address the bridges both at 317 up north and the Oslo bridges. 
the 317 complex on both the North Dakota and the Minnesota side uh, provided an on-land span to allow water to go through on the approaches, uh, along with reducing the elevation of the approach to the bridge to a level where on really high floods it will be an, uh, an escape route. Then the Oslo area with the Red Bridge and the Murray Bridge, the two bridges would be replaced with bridges at the same time, greatly reducing cost, uh, with similar structure underneath, similar engineering thought patterns, similar flow methods. Phase two, a mile east of the interstate to the Shane Road, uh, we'd raise that road to protect the interstate. And we'd raise the road going south of Oslo for protection of Highway 1. Phase three, then would remove the rest of the minor restrictions along the river. There's several abandoned yards along the river where the driveways are still located there and it would allow our water to flow through the area here. I think if you sat down and looked at the numbers, it would make sense to make these improvements so that you could alleviate some of this damage. When you're talking millions and millions of dollars being spent every flood event, it wouldn't take long to pay for a project. The one thing we realize from our group and locally, we're trying to solve a problem that's way beyond us. We, the flooding we have here is water that isn't ours. This bridge complex in Oslo drains 31,200 square miles through that bridge. This is a multi-state, multi-area problem which we're trying to manage here locally. We certainly need help from outside of this area to help fix the problem and maintain the river for everybody's use.